for exploring open types of relationships. So like, pop hey, Purple Pizza Eaters, welcome back to the channel. And today I got a treat for y'all. We have wing stop. We have mango habanero. These are the voodoo fries. I got two chicken tenders and a whole bunch of the hot honey. And we're about to get it in and get started. First things first, pop open the bev. I'm gonna start with these delicious hot honey wings first. They give me majority flats, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna move that out the way so y'all can see my face. Let's get a little thumbnail. I think they gave me majority ranch, but I also got some blue cheese too. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Always spilling something. Mm. Bloopers. Mm-hmm. And funny enough, I've never had their hot flavor before, and I've never had their chicken tenders. I'm not a ranch person, but they really do have decent ranch. I love blue cheese. Mm. These are so good. Mm hmm. I should have asked for these well done. They're a little bit on the soggy side. I'm gonna find my blue cheese. 
I'm just not enjoying it as much. I love my blue cheese. And I have posted a short of me eating Wingstop. And I was like, they hands down have the best blue cheese. And somebody was like, their blue cheese is really good, but it's not the best. I'm like, it's the best to me. <laughs> Can I say that it's the best and not have it mean the same thing to someone else? I just prefer blue cheese over ranch. Ranch is delicious for what it, you know, for what it's for. Um, but I just prefer blue cheese. I'm dipping it in blue cheese. It just hits different. No napkins whatsoever. I might have to call my assistant to bring me some napkins. I didn't eat anything while I was away. I just needed some more napkins because I have a thing with sticky things on my fingers. I don't like it. Those tenders are so fire. Where, I, where I've been, what I've been doing with my life. Oh my god! Yikes! Comment down below, what's your favorite Wingstop flavor? What's your Wingstop combination? Go back to the hot honey. I'm gonna have it with some ranch. I'm gonna have it with some ranch. I'm gonna just pour it, whatever. Drench it. Drench it, drench it. For the messy police, come get me. I'm just going to say this. I love every single one of y'all. Every single one of y'all. 
every comment I get, no matter if it's criticism or anything, I love every single one of y'all. Because y'all took time out of your day to watch my video. And I appreciate you. However, if you have misophonia, which is a condition that inhibits you from hearing chewing sounds or you don't just don't like hearing chewing sounds or smacking or noises when it comes to people eating then do not watch my content This is not for you. I make food content. I'm a food creator. So yeah, <clears throat> that's all I have to say about that because I don't, I don't get those comments often, but in my like past videos, I've gotten that. I'm like, if you don't like hearing people eat, why are you watching a food channel? Like, <clears throat> I understand I probably ended up on your recommendations but if you can if you see a person in the thumbnail going like this they're going to be eating in the video <laughs> and i'm not doing it on purpose just how you know what i'm saying it's how i eat But this all love. I ain't mad at you. Blue cheese drip. If you've made it this far, thank you. Give this video a thumbs up. And if you feel inclined, subscribe. Mango habanero is gonna be forever my favorite <clears throat> it's a it's a just a certified banger it's so good 
I love mango habanero. And Wingstop's wings are so meaty. They wanted to be at work today. I'm gonna just say that because sometimes, sometimes I'll get winged up on a random Saturday night, and them damn wings be looking pitiful. But today, they wanted to be at work today. Mm -hmm. I should have got the wings well done though, low key. But. It's okay. Ooh. I like to take the little gristle part off. So then I can just dip it and it comes straight off. These are hitting all the spots. I'm debating whether I should tell this story. Because it's a bit controversial. And I don't know, it, it, it really will be me being vulnerable, like more vulnerable than I've already been. So I wanted to get some, some of the eating out of the way before I started the story. So the names are gonna change in the story just to protect that person's like identity and all of the things. But I'm going to tell you the story that on how I essentially helped ruin my friendship with this beautiful human that I was super close with. We did not know each other very long, but it was a very genuine connection. And those are rare, even when you've been friends with somebody for like 12 plus years. So, with me and this woman, I'm going to name her Jennifer, just for the sake of the video. Mm. And then I'm going to get one more drink. I'm going to run to get my other drink. So, okay, got me another bow. So, yeah, me and Jennifer were friends. I want to say it was almost a year. Um last year so when i came back from mexico i came back like almost like march like march 6th or something like that it was close to like it was definitely the beginning of march so i got back and it was like this event okay how me and jennifer met sorry i have to backtrack a little bit sorry little adhd guys so me and Jennifer met a year prior, like 2022. And yeah, we met in 2022. We met at a pop-up shop. I have a business and I'm pretty open about my business and all the things that I sell and da 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 da. She is she was a um like artisanal oils and candles you know maker really amazing stuff 
so we met then and she was like oh do you do these often do you go to pop-up shops often and I'm like no I don't I you know actually I'm like I do do them pretty often well at least back then I did I, I did like five a year so yeah I'm like off and on I'll do a pop-up shop here and there we hit it off hung out became really close at these events Sometimes we were neighbors at the events. And we would just like enjoy each other's company while selling our products. So during that time, I was newly single. Well, I had been single for a year, fully a year back then. So I was like exploring dating and dating options and, you know, getting out there. And I fell upon these, you know, different sites for people who were exploring open types of relationships. So like polyamory type of relationships. And this this video is not for kids this this video is not kid friendly and um i don't ever claim to be for kids or have kid content but i know that there are children following me so this video will not be for children just you know because of the context anyways so i was on those like different dating sites meeting different people from different walks of life different um unconventional uh what am i trying to say <laughs> unconventional lifestyles there we go and met this guy we're gonna name him brad for the sake of the video his name is brad okay so jennifer and brad okay um they okay not real like hold up met brad first met him even before I met Jennifer right keep that in mind so I met him on this app he was saying that oh he was single and that he was looking to you know have a poly relationship with somebody okay with his girl and another woman at the time I was interested in men at that time I am no longer dating men or pursuing a hetero relationship keep that in mind too Okay, so we never met in person. I just was like at a distance with it because I was like so introverted at the same time. I'm just like, I don't think I'm ever going to meet up with you. So yeah, we, we became texting buddies and it, it got really interesting really fast to say the least. In that type of lifestyle, it's very quick, very fast. Nobody thinks to like take a chill pill and like get to know the person it's always about the you know what you know what i mean so it's never about actually getting to know somebody i'm gonna dip it in blue cheese so rewinding so when I met Jennifer, last year, our mutual friend is having a performance. And my other friend, Ursula, tagged along with me to go to the event. I invited her like at the last minute because I kind of forgot to tell her and but she be knowing where all the events is anyway. So she was on her way because I wanted to go out with the girls after. I wanted us to go and hang out at a you know bar after. I went there not to work, just to support. I walk over to my friend's table and I'm like, hey, do you need help? My friend Jennifer, okay? I'm like, do you need help? And she's like, yeah, 
I'm waiting for my boyfriend to come back from saving our seats because I'm, I'm going to be working during the performance and he would, you know, I'm going to not have a chance to have a seat. So he's saving our seats. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'm like, I finally get to meet your boyfriend. Cause like she, she had been talking. She had been talking about her boyfriend since the day I met her, which was like a year prior. So I never met her boyfriend whole time. I'm thinking he's like some white guy, you know, she's like, oh, he's really tall and blah, 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 blah. When that person bends the corner, guess who the boyfriend was? Brad. Baby. Sorry if I'm bumping this camera. I just about fell out. I just about fell out. I couldn't even believe it. Like, <clears throat> you know, when you are in a state of shock and your emotions are heightened, like when your fight or flight is revved up, you don't think. I don't care what nobody says. Your brain function is impaired, okay? And putting on top of a person with some neuro spicy activity already, my brain was literally mush at the time. So I, he looks at me, right? With this like very type of face, like very, cause he, he knows that I know him. And he's looking at my face to see if I'm going to make a face. First of all, I, I suck at masking. I can't mask. Whatever is going on in my brain shows on my face. So I'm trying to keep a neutral face. Like, oh, hi. Like, how's it going? And he was like, oh, I'm good. How are you? And I'm like, oh, nice. I said, oh, this is your boyfriend. And she was like, yeah, we've been together for eight years. She's like just the sweetest person and she's such a beautiful like has a beautiful heart and just very genuine and just uh just mwah, like chef's kiss type of person and I, I just felt it was not the the time sorry if I'm hitting my mic uh, I'm all over the place today but like it just wasn't the time it wasn't the place it wasn't the it just all was all bad timing wise. So I just did not address it right then and there. We enjoyed the show. We enjoyed the rest of the evening. She ended up not going out with us. And there's more about that later in just a few minutes. And my other friend Ursula and I were like at the bar and I just was like so quiet and just didn't know what to say. She's like, Ariel, what's wrong? And I'm just like, so I met Jennifer's boyfriend today and it's a guy that I matched with um, a year ago and we were talking and the last time him and I talked was before the new year when he had sent the text or whatever and he on those apps he was saying that he was in a poly relationship and that his girlfriend was fully aware of him being on these websites. And because I don't go into anything, I go into everything like tiptoeing. And then I'm gonna also explain the reason why I'm just like not interested in that type of dynamic anymore anyways. But I always ask 
like oh is your girlfriend okay with this like does she know what's going on like does she know your that you're here type of thing you know and he's like yeah yeah uh-huh she knows like me and my girlfriend we have a beautiful relationship So it's, it was like, okay, cool. Like, I don't, when a person says like, okay, my partner knows about you or knows that I, I'm here. I don't question it. Who am I to sit there and poke and prod all of the things, right? I had no idea who the girlfriend was, had no idea who, like, how she looked or nothing. I knew nothing. Like I knew, I didn't even know who she was. So when I met Jennifer at those events, I promise, like I've I've never seen her before. And I didn't tell her, it was, and the thing is, it was weighing on my mind. This event happened in, I want to say, April. April. So I got back in March. Event was happening in April. I ended up telling her in August. It was weighing on my mind. I, and the thing is, we saw each other one more time for Juneteenth um, at another event. And that is why I say I'm a terrible person because I had so much time to tell her. But like during that event, I was so wrapped up in the like, thought process of how will I tell her when is going to be a good time to tell her should I tell her in person should I tell her over the phone should I tell her like not to ever tell anybody via text so I voice messaged her because she was she just had started a new job and she was working from home and I you know work for myself so I was just like okay today is the day I'm gonna tell her I'm just gonna tell her it's going to be very uncomfortable for her and I'm just here to hold space for her. I wasn't even thinking about myself. I wasn't even like, it's all, I wasn't making it about me because it wasn't. I'm like, how will I tell this person who I call my friend this information? And I just sent it through Facebook voice note. It was really horrible. It was just, you can tell she was upset. You can tell that she was crying. You can tell that like she was heartbroken from the information. And then she called me. And and she called me and we both just started bawling over the phone. Like it was horrible. She was like, I'm like, I know I should have told you the day that I knew about it. And I'm and I'm like, I'm here to tell you that like I understand if you don't want to be my friend anymore. I just know that you don't deserve that you don't deserve a friend like this and you also don't deserve a partner like this like you just don't deserve it and she was just like I'm not even upset with you she was like I'm not even mad at you because like what could you have done in that situation it would have it would have literally looked like I am here to start drama and that's not what it was. Like I was in such a weird space mentally. I was messed up. Like I just didn't know how to process it. It was horrible. And you know what the messed up part about it was? After I had told her and she confronted him, he calls me five minutes after I hung up the phone with her. After I got off the phone with her, he was calling me. I'm like, I blocked him. When it went straight to voicemail, so I wasn't answering the phone. Mm -mm. No way. No way, Jose. And I'm just like, and I sent a screenshot of that too. I'm like, he just called me. So there's your proof that I'm not making any of this stuff up. I told her that not only was he talking to me, there was another young lady that I, you know, was friends with that admitted to sleeping with him. 
I didn't sleep with him because I, I'm not just about to go to anybody's house, first of all. Like, I have a child, okay? Majority of my friends don't have children. I have something to lose. I have something to live for. So I'm not meeting just randos on the internet going to their homes. And especially on a site where it's like literally to hook up. It's not to meet people and to create genuine connection. It's literally to hook up with people. That's a, that's where a lot of poly people hang out in those spaces. Like it's parallel. Like poly, the poly community and the kink community are very parallel. Not quite the same, but you will definitely find that those dynamics intertwine with each other. So, needless to say, I have not spoken to her yet. I have, I have not heard from her since last year. She wanted space. She said she needed space. I gave her space. I'm going to, you know, allow her the space to like reconvene. I've tried to ask about her and reach out to other people who are who know both of us um to just like send her my well wishes but she's you know obviously upset and blocked me on all social media so i'm i'm okay with that it's just like it's been weighing on my mind cuz i'm like i really think that i'm just like this really great person and i'm like i have tendencies to be such a horrible individual sometimes so i'm like i'm here to tell my story <laughs> so the people are like yo she's so sweet she's so miss goody two shoes no I, I i ruined friendships or i have ruined friendships in the past so yeah it is what it is it's not to throw anybody under the bus it's really to just like tell the story because i thought about her the other day i'm like she was such a good friend so that that's the story and yeah the reason why i'm no longer poly is because it, ugh, it's just not a good space to be in for me it wasn't it wasn't a good space like you you can't expect to be You can't expect to be like number one when like you're number two. Like you can't expect to be treated like at number one if you were the second partner. And it wasn't like, oh, it wasn't like, oh, I'm... I'm a partner and I get to have my own partners. A lot of the dynamics were I am in the relationship with these two people who have, who have known each other for years. So I always just found myself on the outs. I always just found myself like being the last to know everything. Now, I just date single women. <laughs> no more couples, no more none of that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm.
I had 24 wings. One, two, three, four, five. I got five of these guys left. I got one, two, three, four, five, six of these guys left. And barely any of these left. I did pretty good. I was 24 wings. I don't finish all my food, especially when I'm talking. Like when you're filming a mukbang and you're talking, it really interferes with the eating. That's why I make sure I talk like I talk at the very end and I eat for like the first six, seven minutes and then like eat in between because once you get on a roll in your story and you're trying to remember the story, you're trying to recall what you're about to say next like the food getting cold so yeah it was really good Wingstop did an amazing job with these wings they really wanted to be at work today and i love that for them <laughs> um but that is the video thank y'all so much for tuning in don't forget to like comment share subscribe if you want to and hit the notification eh, hit the notification bell so you know when i post Follow me on TikTok, Purple Pizza Chronicles. Follow me on Instagram, as told by Ari UGC. And then find me on YouTube, Purple Pizza Chronicles. Or no, not YouTube, Facebook. Oh my God. Excuse me. Find me on Facebook, Purple Pizza Chronicles. And until next time, peace.